Sports fans, welcome to episode two of the Havlina Coaches Show for the 2021-22 season as we finally have some seasons underway in Havlina Nation and we're going to start episode two with our head Havlina Indoor and Beach Volleyball coach Tanya Allen. Coach, thanks for covering out some time once again. Thanks for welcoming me. And this is about to start week number two for you guys coming off of week number one where you guys finished with a perfect 4-0 record it was a weekend that was perfect in record for you guys but I know from you talking to you it wasn't you didn't feel like it was perfect as far as execution was concerned for your team how do you assess the way your team played this first weekend overall they definitely showed that they want to win they show that they can find a way to win I think our execution was not where I wanted to be both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball um, but the reality is they found a way to win. So I, I think it, we showed good progress and, and they showed um, really good attributes. And I think if we put it all together, they're going to be really special. And you go back to the last season you guys had in the spring, and one of the things we talked about before was, well, there was no non-conference schedule in the spring. How beneficial is it to have these games? Where obviously, you want to win these games, too. There's no one out there saying, ah, oh, non-conference, who cares? But yeah. how beneficial is it to have these games to try and work out some kinks and put some people in some different situations? Yeah, the preseason is absolutely to learn. Learn about your team, learn about our skill level, what we're good at, what we need to work on. Um, and that's why I said those three weeks of practice where there was no games, it's hard to have feedback. You don't really know the areas that, that are successful and where you need to improve. And I think after this weekend, the team really knows the areas where we have got to get better. And it, it gives them direct feedback, immediate feedback, like, hey, this was not good enough against this team. Imagine against this team how much different it's going to be. And you know, it gives them something to work towards. You talk a lot about a team having the right type of energy, whether it's on the bench or on the court. and. It's tough to tell from where we were a thousand miles away, but it seemed like your team had fun this weekend. Yeah. Are, are you happy with the, the attitude your team had this weekend? Absolutely. Uh, the bench was phenomenal. Um, everybody was prepared. I mean, I could make subs at will, and, and they were ready to go in the game. They were invested. They knew what was going on. They did the, exactly what was asked of them. And they, you know, it's difficult to keep your energy level up when you're struggling. And there were some moments where we were struggling, and still, they fought through it. They kept the energy right. They kept their... Um, chemistry strong and it absolutely was four team wins we needed every single person involved and they all did so it was great you mentioned in that first match afterwards you said you had some players who really stepped up for you guys and kind of came off the bench and stepped up and played big roles how important of a factor is it having players who are involved and excited and are ready to go regardless of whether or not they start the start the match in the lineup or not you can't be a great team without depth I mean, you just can't. You can have the best six in the country, but if you have no depth and you have no flexibility with your lineup, eventually someone's going to come along and find a weakness and just capitalize on that. And we have depth. We have kids that can come in and, and do things, really positive things for us at, at any given notice. And I think that's what makes us even stronger of a team. And one of the things that I think showed the depth you guys had was the way Allison Stachowiak stepped, stepped in and stepped up for you guys. She was kind of a bit player for you guys last season, but then she hit, played a significant role for you guys in all four matches this weekend. How impressed, pleased are you with the way she played? She did a phenomenal job, and she's learning very fast. I mean, she had a lot to learn when she first came in. This is um, a much faster play than she was used to in high school, um, and she wasn't even an outside, so she's learning a whole new position on top of the, you know, the systems and everything we run. And she's very um, open to learning and to criticism, and, and she takes it well. And it's incredible the things she's done, and I think she has a really high ceiling. She'll continue to improve and get better. I heard more than one of your players mention in the lead up to this season how nice it was going to be to have road trips like this again. Because you guys, obviously you played road matches in the spring, but it wasn't really the same right. thing. But I heard you, your players talked about how this, these trips kind of build chemistry, that the, that the team spend time together and bonds together. How important or beneficial is it kind of having a normal schedule where you guys are spending time on the road together more often than you did in the spring? Well, I think being on the road is difficult, no doubt. The traveling is difficult. It's difficult on the body. But, you know, we've had a lot of difficulties over the last year and a half, and we didn't get any of the, the good stuff in, in addition. So while we have to travel and that's difficult, we have all the good stuff now. We get the team dinners. We get the ice cream treats. We get... Um, you know, the funny incidents in the hotel, we get a lot more interaction um, and time together that isn't revolving around wins and losses, and I think that's what makes it special for the girls. I mean, in 
who knows how many years they're going to look back. I don't know that they'll remember every win and loss, but they'll remember their interaction with their teammates and the funny things that happened and the stories and the memories they create. So that is one of the, the special parts about playing in, in collegiate sports. And you guys will be back on the road this week. You'll be in Arkadelphia, Arkansas to play Washita Baptist on Wednesday, and then you'll have another non-conference tournament, despite the fact that it has two conference opponents on the schedule for you guys in Wichita Falls. You'll have two matches on Friday, two matches on Saturday. What are the things you'll be looking for this weekend? Um, I'm hoping that we can improve on our serve receive. Um, it's difficult because they really only have today to practice, so we'll iron out some things with their serve receive. But our, our pa when our passing is good, our offense is really good. So we've got to improve our passing. Our numbers are well below 2.0, and um, I know they're capable of more, so I think maybe the jitters kind of got them. They were a little rattled, and I think we can, we can do better. So if our serve receive improves, I think our offense will really shine. And we do have some things to work out defensively, but we haven't had time to teach it all. And so some of the younger players don't actually know a lot of the system stuff yet, so we can't be too critical of them until we have a chance to actually teach it to them and they really understand it. Is this going to be, is this one of those situations where, so you obviously you said play a Wednesday, play twice on Friday, and then twice on Saturday, and then you have a little bit of a break before right. conference play starts. Is it going to be, is it tough for you guys to really address those problems this week or with the fact that you guys are have five matches on the schedule in three days? Yeah, it's definitely tough to teach it. We won't be able to practice it, but we can definitely show them on film. We can talk them through it and try to teach them um, on paper, I guess you could say. But having the actual reps and being able to practice it won't happen until next week unless we can squeeze it in today. All right, well, Tanya, thanks for the time. Best of luck. We can't wait to see you guys finally back at home on September 17th. Yeah, thank thanks. You. And fans, don't, don't forget, September 17th against Cameron is the first home match of the year for Havelina Volleyball. We hope to have you all there. It's going to be a big day, finally, back to home volleyball at the spec. But, Coach, again, thanks for the time. We'll take our first break on the Havelina Coaches Show. We'll come back with our head football coach, Michael Salinas, when we return. Welcome back to episode two of the Havelina Coaches Show for the 2021-22 season. And we're joined by our next guest, our head Havelina football coach, Michael Salinas. Hello again, Coach. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing okay, Coach. Obviously, coming off of a first Saturday of the year for you guys, I know it wasn't an ideal finish for, for your team, but I want to start with the positives. I thought you had a defense that played extremely well, even when they were put in some tough situations on Saturday. How happy are you with what you saw from on the defensive side of the ball? We were pleased. I, I thought our guys responded well. Uh, Saturday defensively, we played well. We executed our game plan for the most part. Uh, we had some lapses in assignment that allowed some drives to continue, uh, but gave up one score and held them to uh, two field goals. So I just thought overall our defense played extremely hard uh, and found a way to respond in adverse situations on Saturday. It was a very key moment in the game early in the first quarter when you guys turned the ball over. Saginaw had a first and goal at the eight, and your defense made a fantastic goal line stand. And that actually sparked your offense. They then took the ball and went 99 yards for a touchdown. How critical of a moment in the game was that for you guys? I think it was a big, uh, uh, obviously for momentum and uh, knowing as a defense, we talked to our guys about any time we get a chance to get on the field, it's an opportunity to go out and make a play. So uh, regardless of where they put the ball down, uh, we challenged them to, to dig their cleats in the ground and, and uh, get a stop, and they did a really good job on that goal line stand. Uh, it was fourth and, fourth and one, and uh, 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 guys did a really good job to, to get us off the field and give our offense a chance to get back on the field. So we were proud of their effort. Offensively, I think we were all waiting with bated breath to see who was going to be the guy to take the first snap at quarterback for you guys, and it was Shane Johnson Jr. who played the whole game for you guys. And for the most part, I thought it was pretty efficient for, from the pass game standpoint. Had made some really big plays with his feet as well. How happy are you overall with how Shane played? We were pleased. I think he managed the game well. Uh, we missed some, some deep throws and some shots that we would have liked to connect on. Uh, but other than that, he, he did extend some drives with, uh, uh, with his feet and put us in situation to move the chains. Uh, made some good decisions in the ball game. And uh, we just had to finish, you know, the offense did a good job moving the ball. Uh, we got in the red zone four times and came away with points once. Uh, so that can't happen. We're going to have to sort of look at what we're doing and just do a better job in, in short yardage situations. And obviously those are 
probably the situation that hurt the most in hindsight was the short was the the red zone opportunities and the the goal to go situations. What were the main issues for you guys in the goal line on Saturday? Just some bus and assignments. I think our guys got to understand where we are, uh, how crucial it is um, on fourth and one or fourth and goal at the one. Uh, we're going to have to play a little bit harder in those situations, but we had some assignment assignment issues and technique issues. Um, but on fourth and on fourth and a yard, we're going we're going to go for it. We're not going to kick a field goal. What was the, the overall tone of your message to the two? I'm sure it was a very disappointed team post game on Saturday. Yeah, I think there was a lot of positives. Uh, we talked to them about doing a little self-reflecting. Um, we went on a long road trip. Uh, our kids responded and handled it uh, uh, like a business trip. We went out and played extremely hard for four quarters. Uh, didn't have any issues. We played for the most part. We played really clean football. We had three penalties in the ball game. Um, so. The message was we're, we're close, we're not where we need to be. We gotta continue to work and get better. Uh, and then we just gotta finish. Uh, it's, you gotta execute for four quarters of football to win a college football game. And, and we had a couple of assignment busts and a couple lapses in, in, in focus, uh, in my opinion, but it was an effort. And, and we can grow and build off that. And now everyone's attention turns to your fall home opener. Western Oregon will be here on Saturday. This will be the third time in three seasons that the Wolves have visited Kingsville. And even with the, the home game you guys played in the spring, I think that just whet everyone's appetite for the first home game here in the fall. Uh, what are the, where will the main focus be for your coaching staff over the course of these next few days? We're excited to have Western Oregon uh, come down. We're excited to play at home. Uh, focus on defense is to, we got to continue to do a better job leveraging the football. Uh, we have to clean up some of the mistakes we made. We got to do a better job tackling. Um, offensively, Looking at it, we're going to continue to establish the run. Uh, that's got to be a focus for us. Uh, we got to clean up some short yardage stuff and, and then uh, just continue to improve and do a better job of getting in the end zone in the red zone. And you think about all that travel, obviously, I think we got in at around 3 a.m. People got to sleep at God knows what hour on Sunday morning. How do you try and make sure you have a fully rested ball club after all that kind of chaotic travel in the last few days? They came in yesterday for a lift and run uh, late in the afternoon, and we talked to them about the importance of, of uh, yesterday's rest, you know, Sunday night's rest and Monday's night rest, uh, so that we can be prepared to have a good week starting on Tuesday. How much easier is it for you guys to prepare for a game without the having to, to lose the day like we did last week for, for the travel, for the plane trip? Anytime you get to play at home, it's a little bit easier uh, prep-wise, but uh, there still needs to be a concerted focus and effort on what we have to get done for Saturday. Uh, we have to eliminate distractions with the home game. Everybody's got folks coming into town and, and uh, uh, family and friends that will come see them. So we have to find a way to uh, keep the main thing the main thing, and that's making sure we're focused uh, to put our best foot forward on Saturday. How confident are you this team will be 100% focused when we finally kick off on Saturday evening? Uh, I, I think they are. I'm, I'm pleased with the maturity of our ball club. Again, we, we hit the road for a tough road trip. I thought they handled it well. Uh, I think we're growing up as a football team, and I think we're coming together. Uh, so I think they understand what's at stake. It's our second non-conference game. Uh, uh, we've played an opponent that I believe is going to prepare us for our conference schedule, and I think we have an opponent coming in uh, that's going to be formidable and, and again, pro continue to prepare us for our conference schedule. All right, well, Coach, we can't wait to see it back on the field when they finally turn the bright lights on on Saturday evening. Thanks for the time. Looking forward to Saturday. Thank you, Mark. We'll take break number two on the Havlina Coaches Show. Up next, we'll chat with our head Havlina tennis coach, Autumn Woolenzeen. Don't go away. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to episode two of our Havlina Coaches Show for the 2021-22 season. We appreciate you tuning in, and we're joined by our final guest. That is our head Havlina Tennis Coach, Autumn Woolenzine. Hello again, Coach. Hi. <laughs> Fall season just about to get underway. You guys are going to be in Corpus this weekend before your team plays at home the weekend after that. How ready and prepared and excited are your student athletes to finally get to, to, to get the fall season started? I'm very excited. They are... Uh, for many of them, for most of them, except for Maya, this will be their first real fall season um, because the sophomores didn't have a fall season last semester, I mean last year. So um, it's all pretty much new to them and they're extremely excited to compete against other people besides their teammates. <laughs> Are your objectives, so obviously in 
the fall, you're not playing any individual matches like you would in the spring. Are your objectives or the things you want to see from your players any different because of that? Uh, yes, the focus shifts towards things that we can immediately work on, especially once we are finished playing these tournaments. Um, you get to see them play um, more of an individual tournament style game. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, um, <laughs> um, and so instead of a dual match where we're playing other teams, they're playing, each day they're playing two or three different opponents and from different schools. So um, this is a little bit more about endurance and it's a little bit more um, where we get to see them play different game styles and against different players with game styles. So it, it's quite helpful because we get to see immediately um, things that we can work on, let's say in October and later in September, so. What are the things you want to see your team, the areas you want to see your team execute in and, and play at a high level at, at this point in time in the fall? Right now, we just want to see how competitive they are. We want to see um, things that, that carried over from last semester to this semester, you know, see what they learned and, and retained um, <laughs> over the summer. Um, and we also want to see doubles. We want to see some good doubles. We want to see, we're probably going to mix it up a little bit between partners. Not this upcoming tournament, but the next one, my, uh, the one that we'll host here. Um, we will mix up the partners a little bit just to see a different, different look and um, uh, different chemistry just to see what, what works and what, you know, what new might, might work that didn't work before. You go back to that last season, obviously it was a historic season for your program, made it to NCAA Regionals, first time they've ever accomplished that. You mentioned at the end of the season how excited you were for the future of the program. You were really happy with how your team had grown and matured over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. What are the things you look for and that you saw as a coach that, that gave you signs about how, about the way this team was growing and maturing over the season. What were kind of the indicators in that area? They, they first of all, they are really, they were really young last year, uh, with most of them being freshmen. So the things that they absolutely had to do was grow up right away. I mean, we we had Maya and uh, Lau who were our veterans, so to say, but the freshmen. Uh, were way more, there were more of them. So they had to learn on the fly. Um, they had to learn and also, they had to learn at the same time as far as put, and then put it into play at the same time. So we did a lot of things where, where you know, explaining to, the, trying to explain to them before the situation came up. I think that helped a lot to keep them aware of, you know, certain things that happen in college tennis, whether that's line calls or, you know, cheering and, and <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, things like that where they're not expected to do that or, or they don't feel that when they're playing college, uh, junior tennis. So uh, it was very interesting to watch, to be a part of. I had to have a lot of patience uh, and had to have a lot of Positivity. I mean, we, we, we were constantly, you know, like I said, learning on the fly. We were constantly uh, adjusting, um, adjusting the lineup. And, and the best thing about, you know, having to adjust the lineup was the girls and how flexible they were and, and constantly adjusting to the changes that we made throughout the year. One of the things that you and I talked about last year was that the challenges of having also so many international players in the midst of all of the, the chaos that was going on last year with the pandemic and how challenging it was for these student athletes to be away from home in the midst of everything that was going on. Has it been, and just tough for them to travel to get here. So mm -hmm. I guess my question is, how has everyone been able to arrive and get here safely for the start of this year? Yes, everyone is here. Everyone was able to arrive almost drama free. We uh, didn't have, I mean, last year was, I mean, it, it was the beginning of August and we didn't know if everyone was gonna make it to, to classes on time, to school on time. I mean, at a certain point last year, during the end of the summer, we thought we thought most of them weren't gonna be here till October. So we didn't have that kind of drama this year. Uh, um, but uh, the the whole system of, you know, obtaining a visa and, and things like that, there are still uh, a log, you know, backlog. And, and so, you know, getting appointments and, and, you know, first of all, committing, Early, we have one freshman this year. She, compl she committed pretty early, so we were pretty able to start the process earlier. So she didn't. She ran into a couple hiccups, but not 
huge hiccups like last year. Uh, I think that what the pandemic did was it helped to help them put things in perspective. So, uh, you know, was, they really had to understand, and I think it helped us throughout the season. It re really had to understand that this is a team sport. So, you know, we, we had three girls to, or two girls to um, come down with COVID and uh, it helped them to see, you know, okay, one person truly affects the whole team. And, and it was, I, I guess, one of the best lessons we could have learned as a team to see, you know, each decision does affect each person. So that carried over into this year as far as, you know, how much they care about each other, how much they, they care about the decisions each one makes um, and, and how they represent the team. So I think it, it, it helped us in a, in a lot of ways as far as, you know, tennis is individual. And so, you know, they really had to, you know, an outside perspective of, of being on a team and it's not just on the court, but off the court, your, your decisions really do affect everybody. And so, you know, I, I think it, it really helped to bring a lot back into, you know, us on the court and the care and, and, and how much we care for each other and how much we took, took, bleh, took care of our bodies and things like that, so. What are the goals that if your team accomplishes over the course of the next few weeks, you'd be able to say, this is, it's been a successful fall season? Oh, great question. Um, you know, it's not so much about wins and losses. Uh, you know, in the tournament, I, you know, it'd be great to win, you know, the ITA regionals and go on to the national tournament for, you know, fall nationals. Uh, that would be wonderful and absolutely a goal. I think the biggest thing is to, is to you know, small things. So small things take care of the big picture, you know, making sure that we are in shape, making, making sure that they're confident going out there because it is such a quick month as far as September goes and how many we play three tournaments and and you know and, and how you know you you have to be ready right away so um, being sure that one that we remain healthy through those three tournaments um, being sure that we get ourselves in good enough shape to play and compete hard um, and the third would be to go out there and, and really have a good showing and really I mean make it past the rounds that we haven't made it to before and um, you know, we've made it to the doubles final of the ITA uh, regional. Hope, you know, maybe we can win it. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I don't mean that jokingly. I, I, it's a true to life goal to, to have and things like that. Uh, like I said, just making sure that we take care of the small things that lead to the big things. All right. Well, Autumn, thank you so much for the time. Best of luck in the fall. We'll no doubt see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and appreciate everyone for tuning in to episode two of the Having a Coaches Show. A thank you to our other guests, Tanya Allen and Michael Salinas. And we will see all of you back here next week for our next episode. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.